I'm at the point where I might have to like make my TikTok so that I can't get videos about her because it's every single video. <laughs> I feel every single one like almost every single one <laughs> even when it's that and then crushed by ethel kane is now coming mm, back why are you complaining i'm i'm not <laughs> <laughs> hi this is once to watch chef's choice i'm abby kenna and today i'm joined with joined by amelia moore hi you look so good thanks i'm obsessed thank yeah. you we had a very in-depth conversation about your your tooth your gem persona my that gem, you have on. I'm in my gem era right now. Gem it's era. gems only everywhere all the time. I kind of like love the idea of going no makeup but gems. Yeah. Like I think that might have to be the wave that I'm on. Like, it's the wave that I'm on. Sweatpants Aside, but gems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sweatpants but gems. Yeah. I feel like if you have nails with any outfit like the nails will like do all of the work for you it's kind oh. of giving me the same thing that gems would do oh you i know? am kind of in yeah i like have never gotten nails because i can't play guitar if i have them on i know but i would love to be able to like that's the sacrifice we make yeah. like <laughs> look you cannot write a song yeah look you <laughs> take talent. a break <laughs> yeah yeah well you were just at coachella this weekend How i was, was that? it was so much fun i went for the first time two years ago and I was there with my manager and another friend of mine. And whenever I was there, I was just kind of like, eh, not really feeling it. Way too many people, way too hot. Yeah. Lots happening. I don't really know. I don't, I don't know why I didn't really enjoy it that much two years ago, but I saw the lineup for this year and I was like, crawl. I got to go. This is going to be so <laughs> cute. And all like literally all of my female, like favorite female artists were playing and I had the best mother effing time. It was so much oh, fun. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Us women are really like taking over the festival lineups, the all things go lineup. Did you see it today? No, I didn't. Holy shit. Is it everything? It's, it's like too much. Okay. It's like Ethel we go? Chapel. Yeah. I've, I mean, we're probably going to find a way to Cute. do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like an insane, it, I actually, I think I will melt and perish. The girlies yeah. like really did it all. For every Everyone that I saw was incredible. Yeah. I want to know what like powerhouse queer group of people graduated from college like three <laughs> years ago and took over the festival lineup. And just decided to absolutely <laughs> like run it up at the same time. Yeah. yeah. I think we're finally taking over the music industry. Yeah, I think so too. I'm, I'm not down. I'm not mad about it at all. Yeah. <laughs> finally. Finally, finally. Finally. And <laughs> your EP that you just dropped is like kind of like fuck the men, bring up the women. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Definitely. I would uh, yeah. Yeah. How is that release going? It just it's came going, out last yeah, week. Yeah, I know. It's going really good. Um I've had a few of these songs for like honestly two years now. So it feels really, really, really good to still like feel really really connected to them and like they showcase my personality and um yeah they're just like a lot of fun I feel like in the past I've released a lot of like heartbreak mm -hmm. heavy sad songs and it feels really good to have some songs that are out that <laughs> are a little bit reflect a little bit more of who I actually am aside from like being a heartbroken girly it's like totally a personality journey. Yes. If you could give listeners a place to start, mm -hmm. our appetizer to a million more. Our little appetizer, girl, I, I would say push up bra. You remind me of my push up bra. Only hold me up when I put you on. I feel so much better, better, better. Every time I take you off. Boy, you love to shower me in compliments. The song just came out. Uh, I don't know, like a month ago, mm -hmm. but it's so cute and fun and it's very summer. I feel like we're heading into the summer right now and it's just like a windows down, like, damn girl, you remind me of my push up bra. You don't do shit for me when I'm doing all this stuff for you. <laughs> it's just cute and I feel really good and cool while I'm listening to it. So I would say that is like a good Amelia Moore entry moment. I totally agree. And it's also like, like we say songs are for the girls, but this is like, for the girls the song is for the girls you for don't the girls, get literally. it unless you've been 14 and your mom got you a push-up bra <laughs> right like, yeah wear with that one dress to that one party yes, girl and you're like wait i am a woman it like it changed something for me viscerally because i was like fuck now i know what i look like with boobs mm. and i also know real pain right right but what's what's the chorus line um about holding me up yeah i <laughs> it's 
Oh my God. I, re- I remember having the title in my notes, just push up bra. I was like, it would <laughs> kind of be cute and like really iconic to have a song called push up bra. Yeah. And, um, I remember bringing it into the studio and being like, you guys, a song called push up bra. Let's do that today. Right. And my co-writer Jackson Lee Morgan, who is fully a man, not a girl at all, has no experience being a girl, getting a push up bra. Mm. But he was literally just like, you remind me of my push up bra. Only hold me up when I put you on. And I was like, that is gorgeous that you literally just thought of that and i had nothing to do with that but we are doing that and we're writing that down honorary but girly. yeah basically you know girl your pu- your push-up bra like does all the work for you okay it holds you up but you have to put it on right and mm-hmm. i and i feel like in the in the meaning of the song i'm comparing a fuck boy to a push-up bra saying like you only do shit for me when i'm putting you on to something like you only want to come hang out when I'm like also doing something for you that's mm-hmm. so annoying and so one-sided because that's how push up bras work and um the second half is make a big deal out of something small which yes. <laughs> was so oh. funny because that's what push up bras do girl again like they you know make a big deal out of something that might not be there and so did these men that are just like trying yeah. to start arguments out of nothing you're making a big deal of out of something that doesn't even matter um so it's like a really fun play on words and we just had so much fun writing it it's such a good metaphor thank like, you like when i first heard it i was like oh this is fun and cute and mm-hmm. then you kept going i was like wait okay, i know you are spitting truth i, I know <laughs> like the first time you listen to it it's just like a vibe when you pay attention to the lyrics you're like wait <laughs> like you did something wait, there. yeah i love how you didn't even really mean for it to be that deep though it's just like it's just fun and happened. yeah 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 and it's just cute and it's just like easy to listen to and it's sassy little cute personality song yeah so did you work on this whole ep with that collaborator you said jackson lee morgan yes okay. incredible songwriter jackson i love you um but mm, he was he also wrote on back to him with me and not the two others Mm -hmm. so like kind of but um i wasn't even really like intentionally working on a project when these songs were written okay they were all just kind of like halfway finished at some point in time and we were like wait these kind of go together yeah let's finish them so this mixtape isn't really like a through line super detailed storyline like my debut ep teaching a robot to love is But um, it's just a collection of songs that I would put on a mixtape for my friend that is like trying to get over a guy. That's why we call it He's Just Not That Into You, like the movie. I don't know if you've ever I seen it. I was going to ask you if that was okay. Yeah, definitely. It Obsessed. kind of like the way the tracks are ordered, it does sort of feel like a, a movie yeah. like, plot line because mm-hmm. it starts off like super lighthearted and then we get deeper and yeah, deeper. Yeah, 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 yeah. And by the last track, we have like, we're left with a message. Uh-huh. <laughs> we are. We are we are definitely left with the message for sure. I love that. It's kind of cool that you like started them independently and mm-hmm. then finished them, them with the idea. Yeah. Because yeah. I hear a lot of the times of people like sitting down to write an album. Mm-hmm. And that to me sounds like impossible. I feel like the a pressure little daunting, of that. Yeah. Is that how you did your first EP? I think. Oh, wow. It was so long ago. I remember feeling so many feelings about this one piece of shit and had like been writing a lot of songs that I needed to write just to get all of these feelings and thoughts off my chest and I was playing Cards Against Humanity with my friend Alex hi Alex (laughs) and this was over Thanksgiving like literally three years ago now I think wow and um one of the cards that we pulled said teaching robot to love on it and we like laughed so hard because it was like a funny joke because you guys know how the game cards against humanity works Mm -hmm. but after we finished laughing i was like wait that's kind of hard i'm gonna write that down yeah and as i was continuing to just write about this certain situation that title stuck with me and i wrote what ended up being the intro with that title in mind and the more I thought about it, I was like, wait, this this is the title of the project for sure. Like this defi- this encapsulates this whole entire feeling of what I'm saying about this one guy. Yeah. And it w- once we had that title, we were able to work on some of the songs that we had already made and like incorporate some like robot sounds into them or That's cool. even think more specifically about what is what are more lyrics or words in this universe that 
is about a robot and right yeah so like kind of maybe i think we found the north star like two months into writing songs for it and then we're able to like completely follow it and get lost that feels like the most authentic way to do it Mm -hmm. honestly Mm because then you kind of like easter egged your way yeah like piecing it into a project Mm -hmm. i love that how does your songwriting process usually work? Like, is it mostly sessions in studio? Do you start things at home? It's different every time. Yeah. I feel like my favorite way to write a song is to have an idea that I already know and I love. And maybe it's a title, maybe it's just a lyric, or maybe it's a melody. Yeah. And I get together with my favorite people and we all catch up and kiki and get a coffee before and just catch up on life mm-hmm. and be friends. And then honestly like fucking around until (laughs) until something dope happens like starting with the beat or a a chord progression freestyling some melodies over that and then just going from there yeah I think that's my favorite my favorite way you can hear in the music that you're like starting it from a place of like enjoying Mm -hmm. being like creative or like with the people you're with yeah I always tell this story about how in college I went to school for songwriting Mm. um we would always get an assignment to like write a rap song or like write a song that's like kind of bad on purpose Yeah, because you end up getting to better ideas when you're like not taking yourself seriously. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And yes. I, I love that you've like committed to that mm-hmm. in this EP. Yeah. Back to him. I feel like that's my entree. I am obsessed with that song. Hey, you know, I've been there too. Fucking rap with old news. Fucking rap with old dudes. Never just you, baby. If he ain't got the money for a bad friend, he's about to take up any head space. And you can't trust no man who's skipping leg day. Talk that dead way to you. And that one was very much what we're talking about. Us just yeah. like talking shit about guys and like being like, wait, that's so funny. Can we write that down? Yeah. Or like just being on the microphone and joking about something but that ending up like actually being really smart and really funny um yeah we were just having a lot of fun writing that song yeah i mean like in the best way possible it's like some of those lines it's like we can't say that but we will but we're gonna <laughs> the, we're gonna say show that. that dick you're undickable you gotta Is that show this dick that you become undickable yeah insane that line awesome. i first of all undickable we're making up a word what does that even mean and it's in I the dictionary already. It's in the dictionary <laughs> with my face next to it. Yeah. Um, but this was another Jackson Lee Morgan word. Oh my god. Iconic Jackson Lee Morgan. He's we, the queen. We I love, love him. It. I know, we love him. He's one of the girls for sure. <laughs> um, but again, he said it as a joke just to like be funny, because we were trying to rhyme with the words before it, physical, predictable. Mm-hmm. And he said it and I was like, haha, absolutely not. <laughs> but everybody else was like, wait, I think it's kind of I think it's kind of funny. And I had to like call some of my friends and like see how they felt about it. Cause right. I was like, does this even make sense? Like, is this stupid? Every time I went out the following, honestly, four weekends after that, I was just like asking everyone I saw, like, what do you think about this word, undickable? And everyone would just be like, ha ha ha, love it, do it. Oh my and, God, wait, um, you have great friends. Though. I know, I have, <laughs> I have great friends. It took me a little while to like get on board with that one though, but I'm so glad I did. Cause I think it's like one of the most iconic lines of the song. Yeah. So. It's like a, an era changing word. Right. Like this is the new era of Amelia Moore simply because of that. You gotta tell this like, that you become undickable girl. He can't hit no more. You gotta let him know that you're untouchable. That's basically what it means. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's well, true. I've been loving the videos you've been putting up to that song. Thank Those you. Those are going crazy. And Thank everyone's you. loving the undickable in the comments. That's like- Girl, not the, not the men. Not the men at all. They're not the target audience. But they're not the target audience, girl. I think, I think- If they are mad, that is the entire point. You know what I mean? Like be mad because the call is coming from inside of the house on your end. You know what I mean? Like something is stirring up inside of you because you heard my song and you know that I'm talking about you. So be mad (laughs) because that's the whole point. (laughs) Yeah. But you've been, you've been like collaborating with some, some fun friends on these little dance videos. I have been. Yeah. How has that been going? So much fun. Um, Jaden and Kara, who I'm assuming you're talking about. I am. Yeah. I'm obsessed with them. I had been following them on TikTok for a while just because they would come on my for you page and be like these girls are so cool let me follow them they're so cute yeah and whenever I was thinking about concepts for this music video and 
how I wanted it to feel just really, really fun and playful and cute and have a lot of energy. They were the first two people that came into my mind. And a few months ago, I just like hit them in their DMs. I was like, can we get coffee? I want to tell you guys about this idea. And they were immediately on board. So Yay. excited. Um, and they're so talented and have such amazing ideas. Like they had great energy while we were um, working like on set. They were so great and I love them and I want to continue to do more stuff with them in the future. That's super sweet. Yeah, they're amazing. I love the lore of like following someone, being a fan, thinking they'll never respond. Yeah. And then they're just like, you're like, wait, Down. let's go. It's I know. classic LA. Classic too. LA. Came together so well. Very, very proud of the video. It's my fave. Yeah, no, I mean, all of it's very cunty. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How long have you been in LA? January 2020. So okay, like over four long. years. Yeah. Which is insane to say. Because I feel like. Short. Uh, I don't know. When I think about it, I'm like, damn, girl, I really have. It's it's felt like four years, but at the same yeah. time, it it flies by, um, in a scary way. In a scary way, but also COVID happened, and that like felt like barely, you know that that didn't feel real. No, yeah, you know. So oh yeah, like, wait. So January twenty twenty, you had okay. Literally, it, I think it was three weeks before everything got locked down. That's I ugh. moved here. I dropped out of Belmont. I was a Belmont girlie. Okay, I was going to ask what... Also yeah. songwriting major. Yeah, I um, almost went to Belmont. Yeah. And then I didn't because I feared I would drop out with the amount of religion classes. Yeah, a lot. Too many. A lot. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. How <laughs> I, far into it did you drop out after? I was there for a year and a half. Okay. And I knew that I was going to drop out, so I honestly didn't waste time taking classes like that. Like, really? I just took the classes that I knew I would enjoy like songwriting or there were some like audio engineering classes yeah. and vocal lessons. I was doing all of that because I knew I was, I was going to leave. But was that cause you like didn't really love college as a concept or I just knew the first year that I got there, I started taking trips out here mm -hmm. and I was realizing, wait, I'm learning way more in a week of being in LA about the entire music industry than I am in an entire semester at college and that's yeah. not like shade on Belmont either like I literally love that school and miss it so much and I'm so thankful for my time there yeah because it was such a great stepping stone for me but I just knew that to really immerse myself I would would just need to move out here so I dropped out 19 broke Dude, good for no you. money got out here COVID happened I was like wait what am I doing diva I can't go home because ew can't do that yeah so we suck it out. Thank God we suck it out. But it was a little dark. <laughs> yeah. Did you move here alone? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I definitely had some, some friends here already, but you know, I had no team, no manager, mm -hmm. no nothing. I literally knew and was only working with one producer at the time. And he was kind of introducing me to all of these people. But in the middle of COVID, it got to the point where he was like, Rob, you don't, really have your shit together at all i have wow. to keep my lights on i have to pay my bills you're not paying me anything i love you but like i don't i can't really prioritize your project right now and i was like wow i really gotta get my shit popping. wait <laughs> awesome thing to do though like from a friend perspective yeah totally because i feel like people will just ghost you yeah or they'll just like not prioritize you but still book sessions yeah. and that is a a true friend and collaborator mm -hmm. And the kick in the ass that you need to be. Oh, like, definitely. Let me get a team. Definitely. That's when I started posting my songs on TikTok for the first time. And yeah. thankfully, people were responding really, really well to my original music, which is how I gained a majority of my fan base on TikTok in the first place was my first year of just posting songs that were not out, had no plans to come out. Yeah. Um, but thankfully found the right team started meeting the right people and yeah i'm really thankful for my team now yeah best. that's very serendipitous i feel like tiktok can either give you that boost or almost give you like the wrong kind of boost yeah where like now it's pressure and stress because people are interested and yeah then, so it's like a very double-edged sword mm -hmm. so i'm glad that it's all working out now it's all working out it's i all love working this out. yeah me too i'm like so working backwards but i'm curious when you started playing music in your life <sighs> the first introduction to music i had was the violin i actually started playing violin when i was five 
Slay. And I played for seven years, which is so funny because if you hand me a violin right now, it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and that is literally <laughs> all I could give you. Um, but yeah, I grew up super religious, homeschooled in church, and once I realized that I love music just from singing in children's choir, student choir, even leading worship as the poster child for my student ministry. Love. Um, my church also had like theater, like musical theater yeah. things. And that was so exciting to me. And I was Annie whenever I was, I think, 10 or 11. And I was fully convinced that I was going to be a Broadway girly because of that. I was like, I am a performer. I I'm literally never had New an York. original experience. <laughs> <laughs> it was Annie that did it for me, too. It was Annie, girl. Like, I was like, wait, tomorrow. This is no, me. Yes. This is literally everything. And um, I stuck with theater for a minute. I was, like, really convinced it was going to be a New York girl. Mm. But... I think whenever I was around 15, I was in this theater company in Atlanta and I was around a lot of people that were way more invested in the theater route than I was. Yeah. And I realized, wait, why would I be on stage and sing someone else's songs and pretend to be someone else when I could just write my own songs and be myself? Mm -hmm. Huh? I wonder what that means. Hello. It's what being an artist and a songwriter is. Um, so that's really when I started writing songs but it took me a while to get there. The, the arc from violin to musical theater to artist and songwriter took a long time. Yeah. But music has definitely been a part of my life for like as long as I can remember. Yeah. The through line makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. though. I like, I also was a musical theater girly and I feel like at the start of my career, I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, I'll do anything <laughs> to stifle that. And now I love like, Lizzie McAlpine is doing this beautifully where yeah. she has like a musical theater sort of inclination in her songwriting. Yes, like definitely. The dynamics, the cinematic storytelling. Mm -hmm. And like, we all love that. We do. There's a reason that we liked musical theater when we were emotional children. <laughs> yes, I know. I saw my friend on the like Broadway tour of Mean Girls a couple oh, weeks ago. Love. And that was my first time seeing a musical in years. And it gave me so much joy. Yeah. Because these bitches are performing, girl. Like, running around, singing, dancing, flipping. They're singing turning at it the out. same time, acting. Like, they're doing it all. They're turning it out. Yeah. So, I have a lot of respect for those performers also. Um, but, yeah. I, like, in, in the future, I, like, want a whole entire, like, musical theater number on my, like, big arena tour like I oh like my God. I, I like want that for myself and for my theater girls so bad yes I can um, see this but we'll like we'll get there we'll get there <laughs> we'll I mean you there. have it in your music already mm -hmm. like there's obviously you've had like the hyper pop sort of background we're in a new space now yeah it's like a little bit more R&B-ish mm -hmm. I'm curious what the like sonic influences were when you were producing this EP yeah definitely well I think it's it's crazy because he ended up getting on back Tim, which is like such a full circle moment for me. But mm. Timbaland is a producer yes. that I've always loved and looked up to and was definitely a reference whenever we were making the beat for back Tim anyways. Um, so I, I, I actually think whenever we were in that session writing for it, we were listening to... Um, <laughs> it was a Drake song. I can't remember awesome. which one it was. Uh Wait, I want to think about it. Can I like look yeah, it up really quick? Yeah, please look for it. Last week, Giselle and I were at this college fair and yeah. I had to like interview kids to like put a stamp on a scavenger hunt. Period. And the question I would ask them was, who's your ones to watch? And 90% of them said Drake. Yeah. Which is <laughs> like... I'm like, I don't know if he's one to watch. He's definitely not one to watch, girl. I was like, we've, we've watched that. <laughs> we've, um, we've been watching... <laughs> You're 16. Like, I think we have been watching. Wait, that is so funny. Yeah. A decent amount of them said Bad Bunny, too. I was like, I think I need to define okay. one to watch okay. for y'all. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Sacrifices. Okay. Important. Drake, Two Chains, and Young Club. We were playing Sacrifices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me back to him. Um, no, Timbaland did not produce that, but um, Timbaland has been a massive role model of mine for mm -hmm. forever. Just everything that he's produced and worked on. Like he has such a big influence on my music. And um, I feel like I've always 
instinctually leaned more R&B influences anyways, just because my one of my favorite singers, or honestly, all of my favorite singers can riff their faces off and like sing up and down like Ariana, Mariah, Victoria Monet. Mm-hmm. Um, like those are my singing girls and I want people to think of me as a singing girl. We do. And, oh my God. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to make something that made me feel cool while I was listening to it. And, um, yeah, I don't know. So how did Timbaland become a part of it? (sighs) I love this story. Yeah, please. I was in a point mentally where I was feeling really neglected and just like down about where, I was at in my career this was honestly not even that long ago it was like six or seven months ago Mm -hmm. but I was just feeling like some of my collaborators just weren't really that excited about my project anymore and were working on other things which is totally fine I want all of the love and success for my friends and I want all of them to you know reach their goals and their dreams and everything for sure but I felt like I was getting left behind a little bit and I saw Timlin's live stream on TikTok and I've watched it a few times but I was getting out of a session just like feeling kind of eh about myself and my art and that's so tough because as an artist you literally have to believe you're the shit all the time and like Mm -hmm. remind people constantly that you are who you are and that you're dope and it's really tough to do that when you don't feel like that yeah but I remember leaving the session feeling not the best about myself and I saw that Timlin was live on on TikTok right so I was just like you know what let's just do it it's like 50 bucks i think to make sure i can submit my songs and he listens to them on this live stream within the next hour of him doing it so i was like you know what here's the songs i'm just gonna i feel like he would fuck with me and see the vision like let's just see what happens and i'm waiting and girl he's being honest he's being honest to all of the people that are in front of me he's being like really real and I was getting kind of nervous. Cause I was like, damn, girl, he could eat me up in front of all these people watching. Right, like, that's the last thing you need right now. Ner- <laughs> yes, this is the last thing I need right now. Um, I finally get on and he plays my first song and is immediately just like head bobbing. He's like, woo, wait, who are you? Where are you at right now? <laughs> and I was just I was so nervous. My heart was beating so fast. And once he started playing back to him for the first time, I'm not even kidding you. I think he played the song like, 25 times in a row he would just not stop playing it back and pausing it and asking me questions in between and then playing again and then pausing and asking me more questions and um I was on the live stream with him for like 45 minutes yeah and I was so excited and felt so validated and like wait Tim will fuck with me girl I am the shit this is fierce yes and um literally immediately after the live stream his manager got in touch with my manager and was just like, we need the stems to the song. He wants to produce on it, which is so, so exciting. Oh. And um, I'm really thankful for the way that everything turned out. I got to hang out with him in Miami two weeks ago. He's so cool. That's and awesome. Yeah, I know. Very full circle moment for me because 2020 experienced by Justin Timberlake is one of my favorite albums of all time. Mm-hmm. And to have him be a part of one of my songs is just like everything. Yeah, and the fact that, like, you were referencing his production for so long. (laughs) Hey, King. (laughs) The fact that you were referencing his production for so long, and it honestly wasn't even really you, like, begging for him to be a part of it. No, not at all. You just were, like, just wanted to to be seen. Yeah, and just wanted to be reminded, like, wait, okay, I can actually do this. Yeah. Someone, Someone like you who has had all of the success that you've had, see something in me. I just needed that reminder. I think we all like need a little pep talk sometimes. Cause again, it's really hard to be the most excited about your project all the time, even when you're not feeling the most excited. So to get like reminders like that and little green lights along the way are like really good signs to be like, okay, we're on the right path. Let's keep going. hundred percent. I think people don't see like you're putting stuff out on social media and you have to like be confident a hundred percent. Cause if you show a little bit of weakness, people know. Yeah. They can see it open the crack in your (laughs) armor, (laughs) but underneath all of that, like you're a human, like you're going to leave a session, not like what you did some days. Definitely. I don't know. I feel like a good song 
like that good vibe only lasts me so long but the bad song i think about it forever so yeah i love that that happened me too yeah beautiful me too. Okay. very beautiful well for our dessert track i'm very curious to know what like a cherry on top tune is one that you think deserves more attention than it's gotten or yeah I was thinking about this the other day, actually. I think it was at my friend's house, and we were just kind of listening through my Spotify. Love. Just, like, clicking through some stuff. And a song that I think is criminally underrated for me is Drugs. Stick around, yeah. You gave me the key, so I took a hit. At times I like to see it's really hard to quit. Cause you got me strong now. At least I know now. If I want to get fucked up. I should have done that. Okay. It's it's definitely more on the hyper pop leaning side, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Which I love and I'm so inspired by artists like Sophie and Charlie XCX, like obsessed with that type of soundscape and those sounds. Yeah. Um, but the songwriting is so good and I love playing it live. It goes crazy live and yeah, I feel like that's a little sprinkle of like, wait, she can kind of, she can do this too. Like, this is a cute little like sweet, sour, not my song sweet and sour, <laughs> but um, it feels like an exciting, I don't know, just addition to like an- another layer of who I am and the, th- the sounds that I'm interested in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's I- like ending with like a mango sticky rice. Ooh. <laughs> I feel like that's what that song is. Wait, yeah, that's such a good <laughs> You reference. know what I mean? It's like light, it's cute, it's fruity, but it's like so yummy and like, Yeah, it's got it's that good. like hyper pop crunch to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, love. Love. Well, mine is definitely Name Everywhere. Uh, that's just... Must be the- I also love name everywhere so much yeah I feel like whenever I'm out in public and some girlies come up to me which I literally love 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 when that happens mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes even me, whenever I see somebody that I fuck with, I'm scared to go up to them. But anytime a fan comes up to me and just like wants to say something really sweet, it means the world. So like keep doing that to all of your favorite artists and creators because we really do love it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like most often that's the song that people will bring up to me and be like, bitch, <laughs> this one. And I'm like, period. Let's I go. love that. I know. I love that song. I, it was the first song I heard of yours. Oh, cool. My very best friend in the whole world is like your biggest fan. T. And I went home to New Jersey and I visited him and he like sat me in his car at like midnight. He was like, you need to listen to this song. Oh my God. It's going to change your life and your world. I love that. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned Ariana because he's like the biggest Ariana fan, but then also the person I go to for like indie R&B hmm. like undercuts. So, so. He sounds like he's got a good taste in music, It makes girl. sense. <laughs> yeah, but he does. played me Name Everywhere, and I, like, listened to it on repeat for my whole drive home. I love that song. Yeah. Thank you. It's a really good, like, representation of, like, the emotional side of your music. Yeah, And just, like, the build. Mm-hmm. You get, like, every part of your voice. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, the riffy, the yelling. The riffy, the yelling, the swaggy verse, yeah, yeah, yeah. the vocal production, yeah, I love that song. Yeah, like Thank an earnest you. fuck you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so good. Playing that one on tour last year, whenever I was releasing it, was really cool too because mm-hmm. I was opening for Lolo Zuai, Queen, love her. We bow down, play girl, play girls only. <laughs> um, but to see people's live reaction to hearing that song for the first time was also really special. Yeah. And yeah, I just remember like, having such a fun time playing that one live i'm excited to to play it again yeah and do some more shows sometime soon i hope so we will be on the lookout yeah period well i have a couple of closing questions yeah go for it i would love to know if your music were a candle what scent would it be (gasps) whoa if my music were a candle Hmm. (laughs) i don't know i feel like my favorite candles have some like 
woody like tones to them Mm -hmm. but i don't think my i don't think my music sounds like that i feel like honestly my boyfriend has a candle from i don't know some company that like sent him candles that is like cereal scented like lucky charms or like fruit loops this this makes sense i think it's like very colorful it's not like on the sweeter side it's playful. It's playful. Little cheeky. Little cheeky. Something like that. Is it one of those ones that like looks like a bowl of cereal? Yes. Okay. I know the type. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's I you. also, I do have a candle that like looks like it's an orange. Like it's just, Ooh. I haven't burnt it just because I like, like to have it set on my dresser. Yeah. But yeah, maybe it's like a orange looking candle that smells like cereal. It's like, is this cake? But it's like, is this candle? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it cake? Down. No, it's it's a candle that looks like an orange that smells like cereal. Down. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah, I love okay. that. Uh, my second question is, I would love to know your favorite sound right now that is Ooh. not music. Ooh. <gasps> Whoa, that's a good one. I've <laughs> never, never thought of that before. Wow. <sighs> This Love is a good it. sound. Or also, girl, just like the sound of a fucking bag of chips opening. Ooh, like, I'm about to eat. That little a pop good of ass, air. Yes. <laughs> period. Or like ice ice swirling around in my coffee. Mm-hmm. Love that. But I do like, I feel like Dolly Parton when I have, you know what I mean? That feels like so good in my ears. Yeah. Love. Yeah. Obsessed. Okay. Awesome. I think that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just start doing ASMR. It happens more often than you'd think on this podcast. <laughs> that makes sense it makes sense we're we have a mic with headphones like it's bound to happen and you have nails yeah i have nails yeah (laughs) my final very important question is i want to know who your ones to watch are (sighs) oh my ones to watch yeah who are you listening to that i should be listening to hopefully you've heard of this bitch devin again obsessed with her one of my best friends period yeah she's everything to me um oh my god i have so many talented friends uh, this artist, Slush Puppy, mm. I ran into him this weekend uh, at Coachella. Genius, incredible producer. Just his music for his artist project is also so good. Yeah. Um, I have so many dope friends. That's that's the way we want it. I know. Um, I really love this girl, Julia Cooper, mm-hmm. also. And Deva's really good. Love okay. Deva. I think that's a new one for me. Check her out. I will. Because she's fucking fierce. Sick. I think that that's like four. That's a great Is list. that a good amount of my yes. ones to watch? Oh, okay. Miss Devin. The, the, I know. Everything. Everything about her. Everything. Deep like actually changed me as a person. So good. Yeah. So good. What is wrong with her? Yeah. Yeah. She's like maybe the best singer I think I've ever met She's so in good. my life. It's She's annoying because so like you hang out with her and she like is like singing to herself like for fun. I'm like, that's Fuck actually you. the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. And you're like making up a song about soup. Yeah. That's no, really and stupid. P, her EP is called P. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> her EP. My EPP. Obsessed. She's everything. I know. Love her. Love oh. her. Love her. Love her. Queen. Yeah. Yay. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thanks Congrats on the EP. Me. Thank you. Yay. Well, once again, this is Once to Watch Chef's Choice. I'm Abby Kenna. And I'm joined by Amelia Moore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Amelia Moore. <laughs> I never know if you're going to introduce yourself or not either. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Bye. Yay. Bye.